just came down from that area and I'm continuing down this creek, just lining and continuing that way. Hopefully at some point I get to actually be in the boat. But already have been swimming. Well, after about an hour of lining all down that way, I finally come to a nice little area that I can paddle for a bit. So, whew. I was not expecting to do this much lining, but I went further up the creek than I originally planned. So, <sighs> let's see how, how much uh, worse it might get. First bridge I've come across. It's been quiet otherwise. Lots of cottages, little cabins. That's it. the morning <clears throat> to get woken up by a bunch of duck hunters for a little paddle. I was pretty sure that I had a bit of a leak going on here and there definitely is. <laughs> so I'm gonna go for a paddle, maybe fish for a tiny bit before I get too full. And when I come back, I will be getting the epoxy out. I'm probably going to bring all my stuff over here and set it up. Nice fire pit already made. I've just been wild camping, so I didn't want to make a fire pit. It's the joys of Crown Land, but you're lucky you find some established stuff. The only problem with that is I'll get the afternoon sun, which will be nice. 
but I like the morning sun because it's chilly. up and take that other campsite before someone else decides to because it's nice. All the water collected, plus one bailing. So when I get to the next camp, I gotta make sure I epoxy it. Not a good time for creek travel and lining. My boat's definitely seen better days. It's been well used. But, so we have probably two spots. So one spot's right here specifically. Uh, when I lift the canoe up and I looked underneath, I could see light coming through there. But this spot is the worst. So I'm going to start drying those up and get some epoxy going. And then put a rock on top of it just to give it some weight. Just plug those two back up for now. And then when I check on this a little later, I can uh, do another layer of it. Or I might go on the inside of the canoe. And do it on that side. I don't know. But either way, I think I want to keep using this for next year. I don't really have much of an option. So I'll probably get a big thing of epoxy at some point after I get home and epoxy the entire uh, center ridge there on the inside and then hopefully that'll last me at least for next season.
So yesterday I uh, lost my lighter, probably on the way to the first campsite. So I was bringing a flint with me, which is usually just a bar trick really, but it does come in handy sometimes. All this is, is a little bit of cotton ball, uh, wax, and old man's beard. There we go. Pretty easy. As long as you have everything set up. What have I been doing for the last two hours? I ram randomly decided, hey, I want to season my pan. I don't know how good of an idea that is in the back country playing with hot oil, but I've been meaning to do this for at least the last year and never get around to it at home. That's time now. So yeah. We've just been uh, putting in a tiny bit of oil every so often once the pan's hot. I rub it in really well with some Kleenex and then I put it back on the heat until it stops smoking. And then I just repeat. And I'm hoping that when I finally cook my hash browns I was supposed to cook two hours ago, that hopefully they will not stick. <laughs> I'm also hoping this does not ruin my pot. <laughs> I know it works for cast iron. But usually, cast iron you do in a stove after. So, we'll see. I can't wait to have hash browns that are not stuck to the bottom of my pan. So right now it's gotten to the smoking point. So I let that completely smoke off. Once it stops smoking, I uh, I just put in another drop of oil, rub her in, and put it back on, let it smoke again. I'm gonna keep doing this for who knows how long. Chances are I'll have my hash browns for supper. But uh, yeah, I'll show you what it looks like afterwards, and I'll show you my comparison to my the lid of my pot, my pan, so you can see the difference in the seasoning. And then I'll cook my hash browns and show you how it goes. Either I'm going to ruin it, or it'll be good. <laughs> 
So this is my pan. It's a little dirty still, but uh, that's how the bottom of my pot looked before. A little scrub out. Doesn't get much better, really. But everything sticks to it. And now that I seasoned my pan, or my pot, that's what it looks like. Now, as long as I don't uh, take any soap or a sponge to give it a really big scrub, that should be almost completely non-stick. Probably gonna do it a couple more times today just cause. But yeah, it actually looks really nice compared to what it was. So I'm pretty happy about it. It's just time to test it. So I'm not seasoning this pan. I'm probably just ruining it. But so right now I've been collecting these little uh, sap balls that are on the sides of pine trees or yeah uh, and uh, I'm just working on melting them down because I have another hole in the bottom of my boat so this is my fix until I get home. So all in all Although there are some spots, mainly around the corners, stuck, my pan has stayed pretty much nonstick. So if I did that three to five times, it would be perfect. So, definitely a plus. Usually I lose half my hash browns because they just get burnt to the bottom, regardless of how I cook them. This is my second hole. I tried to repair it with some uh, wax from my fire starters, so I melted them down. And it works, just uh, it's still leaky a little bit. All my epoxy's on the other side, so that's holding perfect. So what I'm going to do, just to uh, get me out tomorrow, uh, is I'm going to pour the sap right in this ridge line. I have a little stopper here so that it'll only go as far. and this is the main area here. Once that's poured, I'm gonna add some pieces of paper just to add some, I don't know, filler, stabilizer. I don't know. I'm MacGyvering it, really. And yeah, worst comes to worst, I'm bailing the whole time out. <laughs> At least it's not, it's not a long trip, so. I don't care if there's some little twigs in it, it'll just add to the stability. That one might be a little too big, but I want it up on the, the ridge of this line too.
pretty about it. If I find more sap, I might do another layer. But I'm just gonna let her dry and that will be it. That's my infield fixing of a hole. Pretty good size hole too at that. After running out of epoxy. Now I'm just trying to make sure it's all pressed in as much as possible. Yeah, let you know tomorrow after I get out how it's going. So this is like Crownland area. So it's not like, it's a site. It's just, you don't pay for it. First come, first serve. But there's no, uh, there's no thunder boxes or anything. So someone decided this would be great to bring out. Oh, if they're doing that, they might as well have just made the whole setup, dug the hole. <laughs> but yeah, there's a bucket over there. There's a whole bunch of stuff because people just come and hang out. But yeah. I can't say that it's any, any more, say, garbagey than some other sites that I see in provincial parks. So if anything, it's it's kind of nicer, less used. Just doing one last look around before I get heading out, but it looks pretty good. There's some garbage here that I wasn't able to grab just because I don't have the room, but next time I'm gonna, when I come back, I'm gonna bring some garbage bags and stuff and maybe clean it up a little bit because this is a really nice campsite. I like it. I'm definitely coming back, so. And I found my lighter. It was way in the bottom of my life jacket, of course. So I went the entire trip without it. All right, time to head out.
just trying to figure out my portage. So I can just do a small portage to this dock. But then there's a lift over over there possibly. Which will be fine. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. Just gotta check and see if this is the actual portage. It could be over there too. I totally found a better path, so taking it. Well, I got 100% turned around. <laughs> Mainly just trying to find where my canoe was in one of the little inlets. And then when I got out, I had to find my bag. But. Alright, I'm on my way back home. So if you're still with me this far, thank you so much for joining along. And I'll catch you next time. Those falls are just what I was portaging around. <laughs> <laughs>